Subcompact cars are still really popular in a world of SUVs and pickup trucks, and the 2020 Nissan Sentra certainly has made a big impression. Welcome back to the channel, I'm Lauren Fix. Today we're gonna to be test driving the all new 2020 Nissan Sentra. Now there are different engines and there are different trim levels. We'll be driving the SV that is the two liter engine. Pretty impressive both inside and out. They had to do a redesign. They had to make it look like the other vehicles so they belonged in the family. And now they look like the SUVs as well. Instead of standing out in the crowd, they made it stand out in a crowd in a lot of other ways. We'll test drive the performance, the safety, and 10 categories. And in the end, we'll give you a car coach reports rating because what you're gonna get here is a lot more information than the dealer's gonna to tell you they're going to try and sell you on the vehicle we're going to give you information so you know if this is the right fit for you and in the end we'll give you a car coach reports total so you can compare it against some of their competitors and we'll tell you what those are as well if this is your first time to the channel we do a lot more than just car reviews we give you good information so you can have car smarts because knowledge is power so don't forget to check out our website subscribe and hit that little bell so you don't miss anything there are so many improvements on the Nissan Sentra. Let's start by taking it for a drive. The base engine for the Sentra is a 1.6 liter engine. The SV and the SR, which are the two top trim levels, have a two liter engine with 149 horsepower and 146 pound feet of torque. Now, when you're looking at a vehicle like this, this is not meant to be a performance car. There is no performance sport mode in this vehicle, and you wouldn't want one anyhow because it doesn't make any sense. There's also no start-stop technology, which I think improves the performance because it's so frustrating to have to stop at a light and have the vehicle shut off. The fuel economy is 29 miles to the gallon in the city, 39 on the highway, which is pretty good. It's a combined of about 33, and that's about what we got. We had this vehicle for a week, and we really like it, actually. I'm surprised the improvement and not just the transmission yes it's a cvt i'm not a fan of them most people aren't but in this case it's helping improve the fuel economy which is a big part of owning a subcompact car but this car is subcompact in category but what you're getting for your money as far as a performance standpoint and fuel economy i think it's a little bit more than that and nissan's done a really great job the pickup on this vehicle as you can see it's okay it's not really neck snapping but that's not what you're looking for performance wise this vehicle earns an eight handling is an important factor when you have a small car like this you want to have good brakes and in this case front disc brakes rear drum brakes which in my mind is mind-blowing that they still even sell any vehicles with drum brakes because although these do the job drum brakes are pretty old school like i haven't seen drum brakes on the rear vehicles other than this vehicle in quite a long time so they're trying to cut corners. I get that, keep the cost down low. I get that as well, but I'm really not a fan of drum brakes. They're just not very up to date. And you're not getting as good a braking as you would if it was four wheel disc brakes. But overall, it has a comfortable ride. It's a pretty quiet ride. And even on these rough roads here in New York State, it handled them pretty well and absorbed a lot of that. And that's important that you have a quiet cabin. It's part of the handling because it's all that noise that comes from the roadway but also the handling this vehicle. And they've done a nice job making it on the sportier side. And although it's far from a sports car, I think they did a really good job on the upgrades because the suspension is completely new. And for that, handling is a nine. Part of the safety features are rear automatic braking. If you're backing up and there's something there, you don't want to drive over it, obviously, especially if it's a person or an animal, this vehicle will come to a stop and that's really important. It also has rear seat alert, so you don't leave something in back or someone in back. That is also very important. And one of the things that Nissan offers that no one else has is the easy tire fill alert. When you fill up the tires, in case you don't know where to check the tire pressure inside the driver's door, for those who don't know, it'll actually give you an alert and that's easy and it makes it easier for people to check their tire pressure. One additional factor that I think is very important is the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, NHTSA, gives this a five-star crash test rating, and for safety, it earns an eight. When it comes to visibility, it's not just the windshield, which is a huge piece of glass, and that is good, it is long, so you get plenty of visibility. The sides are also important. When you look at the sides, it's not just where you rest your arm on the sill, but if the sill is up too high, you lose some of your visibility, and in this case, it is a really nice height, so you can still get plenty of visibility. When you're looking out the back, there are three headrests that are blocking your vision. This is a subcompact, and in that case, you can see that you can only do so much other than removing the headrest, which I guess you could do, unless you 
didn't have anyone sitting in back. So there are some limitations, but there is a backup camera and that is actually a good thing. And for visibility, we gave it a seven. When it comes to seating, these seats are really good looking and they are the new zero gravity seats. Now the entry level vehicle doesn't have that, but this is the upgraded version. So the zero gravity seats are good and there is lumbar and power seats on the driver's side, but on the passenger side, there's literally nothing, just manual controls. Let's take a look at the second row and we'll give it a rating. Now that we're back in the second row, I'm 5'8", so there's not a lot of headroom, but there's good knee room and good shoulder room. So I think you could get three across the back seat. It might be a little tight for a long road trip, but overall, there's pretty good space. Going to the center console, there is two cup holders and there's one USB connection. I think you could use more than one if you've got three people back here. Storage in the doors. Again, everything's soft touch and there's only window lifts back here. When it comes to seating for all four seats, because of the lack of adjustment in the passenger seat, it earns a six. When you're looking at technology, basic gauges in front of you, which are really good. You can control them the way you want and they're analog gauges. Going to the center is a new screen and it does have Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. That is on the higher trim levels and it's also Sirius XM ready. When you go to the lower trim levels, you're not gonna get the same goodies that you would probably want. And of course, it's gonna depend on what the dealer has in stock or if you wanna order it. I do like the size of the screen. It's easy to use. When it comes to navigation, there is no navigation on our test vehicle. I would use Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. It's gonna give you really good directions. And the nice part is it's Bluetooth connectivity. There is no wireless charging, but it's a pretty basic setup for technology based on the price point and the fact that it's a subcompact. Things are easy to use. They're very intuitive. For technology, it earned a seven. Now, when you're looking at features, there's some really impressive features, and that's part of the design as well. And we'll talk about that on the exterior. Starting with what's right in front of you is a really nice steering wheel with a flat bottom, easy to use controls, nothing that would be outside of the norm. You've got your turn signal and your lights on the left, and of course your wipers on the right. Gauges are easy to use. There's even between the two gauges, you can change the settings that you want, whether that's for driver assistance and you can adjust your forward collision warning and of course your audio system. One of the settings off the steering wheel is between the gauges and that's for your easy field tire setting. Really easy to use. One of the things I like about it that Nissan has this and no one else does is it'll let you know without actually checking that sticker in the driver's door, like I said, in safety. That is a safety feature. It's your tires. It's the only thing that touches the ground really nice feature going to the center screen again like technology easy to use below the vents is your climate control which includes heated seats one of the features that's in the center that you don't see in other subcompact cars is usb-c usb and a regular outlet so they let you use whatever it is that you have two nice cup holders huge storage bin that has a light inside of it they've done a great job and for features it earned an eight when you're looking at quality of build on the Sentra, they've done a nice job working with what they can in this price point. This is obviously a really nice valued vehicle. We'll talk about that at the end, but there's real stitching, soft touch everywhere. The look of carbon fiber, not really carbon fiber, but I love the flat bottom steering wheel, very sporty and typically not something you would see in a subcompact vehicle. Everything is easy to use. The quality of the materials are going to hold up. These vehicles are built for good value, but they're also built in a way that you would feel comfortable owning this vehicle for a long time. And to be honest, my father-in-law owns a Sentra and he loves it and they are Nissan fans. But that's not why I'm giving it the ratings that it deserves. Because of the interior and exterior quality of the Sentra, it definitely earned a nine. And I'm really impressed with what they were able to do. When you're looking at the design of the new Sentra, there's some positive improvements. I love this new grill. It's certainly clean. It's not completely functional. Just about halfway up the grill, it's just solid plastic, but it's trying to make that same look that you're seeing on the other vehicles. This is all the portion, just this little bit, about a third of it, is actually using for cooling. So I find that interesting. There's ventilation down here as well. I do like the sporty look, but Nissan's always done that. They've been really good about making aggressive looking cars and they do stand out in the crowd, especially compared to their competition. Now take a look over here at these headlights. They're really cool. And I think they've done a nice job. The halogen headlights on this SV trim level is an upgrade. So this look is still there, but you're not gonna get the halogen bright lights that you're thinking about, but they do look really good and they're aggressive. The 17 inch 
inch alloy wheels are an upgrade on this particular vehicle and they're running on Michelin tires, really good tires that give you long life. Going along the side, looking at this new look, it really looks sportier and they've done a nice job by creating these lines that go to the back. I like how the flow of this vehicle goes. It's very connected, which you don't typically get in a subcompact. The taillights are all new for this year. And of course your central logo. I do like this rear diffuser. I think they did a nice job just making it sportier. And it's also about airflow. So it's not just about the look, it's about the actual functionality of getting the air around the car, which means better fuel economy. It's not a lot, but having a brick in the wind would not have good fuel economy. Now look across the back, you can see it's really nice looking. They give you, of course, the trim level that you bought. I think they've done a nice job. This piece is just for looks. It is not a functional rear vent, not that you would need it but they've done a really nice job. And for design, we gave it a nine. Coming around to the back, you'll find this to be a very large trunk. It's actually larger than all of its competitors. 15.2 cubic feet of storage is quite a bit. Easy lift over, nice and low, well designed from that standpoint. Underneath the carpet is a mini spare, which is a really great asset to have. When you're looking at the competitors in this class, and literally every manufacturer is still making something in this category, there's a lot to choose from. With a starting price of $19,000, and our test vehicle came in at 24, this is not the top of the line. Yes, you can do the SR and make it a little more expensive, but for $24,000, of course, it's full retail, and I would never recommend paying full retail. It got a value score of nine. Also remember that the warranty is three years, 36,000 miles, but the drivetrain is six years. So keep that in mind when you're comparing each vehicle to the other. There's been a lot of changes for the Nissan Sentra, and this is one of the number one selling vehicles they sell. The other one is the Rogue, which is also new for this year, and they've done some great improvements on that as well. You'll be able to check that out on our channel. The link for our channel is down below if you haven't subscribed. I think Nissan's done a great job completely redoing the Nissan Sentra. They've also redone the Rogue. Those are their two best selling vehicles and they really need them to compete with a competition and they've done that. They've made it good looking both inside and out and they've really hit a lot of positive points. There were a few negatives along the way, but other brands have their negatives as well. When you total up all 10 categories for the Car Coach Reports rating, it earned an 80. And I have to say, we have driven all the competition, so don't forget to check that out on our channel. If you got value from this video, make sure to give it a like and a share and add your comments down below. We'd like to start the community. Hear what you have to say. You own a Sentry, you love it, you didn't buy one. What did you buy? Did you get a great deal? Let us all know, let's start the conversation. If, if I didn't answer a question that you might have about the new Nissan Sentra, put it in the comments down below. I love to get everyone talking and learning. So when you go into the dealership, you get more information than they're going to give you and you'll decide on the right vehicle that fits your needs. Thank you for your support on our Patreon page. Follow us on all forms of social media at Lauren Fix and we'll look forward to seeing you next time. Have a great day.